Hands are probably one of the trickiest things to draw at first, especially for beginners. It's a very difficult thing to learn. They're very weird and organic shapes and movements. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down for you. Super easy, super simple, with basic construction and building our way on with more details and veins and tendons. So stay tuned, learn some tips and tricks and all that I know on drawing hands. Anyways, enjoy the video. Now the first thing to know on drawing hands is how to break it down into simple shapes, and that is construction. So what I like to do, as you see right here, is break down the palm of the hand and do sort of an off-centered pentagon, something like this, and then have it get slimmer down to towards the wrist. And the reason for this little point here is because on your hand, you'll notice that the knuckles are not a straight line. There's a little angle to them. So then for the thumb, we have this little triangle jutting out here. As you see, there's this little section here before the finger starts. And then if you want, you can place out all the knuckles. It'd be like this. Then if you're posing your fingers in weird ways, you can have simple lines to start that. And then go in after with just simple tubes for now. Everything should be basic shapes. The trick to drawing really anything is trying to look at it and see how you can break it down into simple shapes. And there you have a very simple blocked out hand as a base. But it's very important to think of it in a 3D sense so that your, your images don't seem too flat. So for example, when I draw my palm shape, I'm thinking of it in a 3D sense, so as if my hand's gonna be facing away from me like that, there will be a thickness to it like this. So there's a 3D shape versus a flat one. But something to keep in mind is that it shouldn't be flat right here because if you look at your hand, your fingers really sit far back in there. So instead of it being flat right here, I'm gonna make an angle right here. So something like this. Again, a little off-centered pentagon. It gets thinner at the wrist, but then this will come out a bit, like a little ramp, because your fingers really sit back quite a bit into your hand. And that is where the little webbing comes in. Again, if you look at your hand, there's a little bit of a ramp in between each of your fingers. That's very important to keep in mind as you're drawing hands. So for example, if I go back to this one, and I were to put in some line work, there'd be a little bit of an overlap between these two fingers and their webbing like that. Again, I'm just keeping it super loose and simple so you can understand that there's gonna be this overlap here. Now, if you wanna get super specific, if you were to have fingers that are in different heights, like say this pinky's all the way up and then this finger's all the way down, the bottom finger will have the top overlap. So I will draw that in real quick over here. So now that this finger is more down versus this one which is going up, the webbing will be on top versus this one will be underneath it. But the main takeaway from this section is that there's a little bit of a ramp right here and always think of your construction in the 3D sense, the 3D shapes, which is just flat objects. All right, the next section is the curves of the hand. Now, as I mentioned before, the, the knuckles here are not a straight line. There's a bit of an angle to them and that height difference goes throughout the whole finger. But it only gets more accentuated like here. It's a lot more steep, this angle versus this angle. And that translates to the fists right here as that you might commonly see people Draw a fist like this, just like a quick little block, and then a little thumb right here, and then just go like this. When that is not the case. But it's important to keep in mind that these fingers also go in on each other. And what I mean by that is what you see in this fist here, that these fingers go in on an angle together. They're not all straight. They're all angled in more so. So if you take your hand and you close it, you notice that this pinky is on a lot higher of an angle than say your middle finger, which is almost straight. So when I go about drawing this fist here, for example, I keep in mind the angle of the knuckles, so a little off-centered point, I don't know, and that these fingers will all come in with each other. They won't be straight parallel with one another. So then we'll have the thumb coming around here. Now the general rule of thumb is that, at least in my case, that the thumb, when you close the fist, will cover two of the fingers. So we'll have it cut around like this. So now when you go in and draw the shape of the knuckles, you see that I'm drawing these on a bit of an angle so that they're not going to be all straight across, like something like that. You'll have this one to be a little more raised, and then it'll start the decline once you get over that middle finger. And then you'll really curve in this last one. Alright, not the prettiest thing, but I'm just kind of trying to keep it quick so that you understand the shape and general curves of the hand. And same thing goes for when you're drawing a fist this way. Again, you'll have that curve to the hand like this. So if there's one thing to take away from this video is to not draw hands where all the knuckles and fingers are all the same length. They should not be looking like blocks. There should be some curve and some shape to them. Another curve to keep in mind is the back of the hand. Now again, if you look at your own hand, you can look at the back of it. And you'll see that it's not a, just a straight flat plane. There's a curve to it. So I'm just gonna draw a side view of a hand real quick. Now we're only gonna be seeing three of the knuckles in this one because the pointer finger knuckle will be hidden behind the middle finger knuckle because this one bulges out more. So we'll have it going out something like this. All right, real simple, but you get the point. 
that you will see more than just one knuckle from a side view because there is a roundness to the hand and the knuckles are not all flat. Some balls more than others. Then you can have some, some tendons here, but we'll touch on that later. One more curve of the hand to keep in mind is that when you're having a hand straight out, if you want to have the knuckles flat, there will not be a straight line the entire way. There's a bit of a drop once you meet the wrist. So it'll be something like this. You'll have the hand sort of drop. You can have the thumb protruding out in the bottom. So you'll see that there's a bit of a drop here where the wrist meets the forearm. Now if you're trying to have a straight line from the knuckle to the elbow, you'll have to raise it up, but then your fingers will be on a higher angle like this. So it'll be something more along the lines of this, then the fingers are going to have to come up for that. You'll see it common with Superman or like the Human Torch when they're flying away. So you can see the difference here. If you want it to be flat, you have to raise the fingers. If you want flat fingers, you've got to have a bit of a curve here. Now the next section is fingers. This will be a real quick section, but I'm just going to go over how I approach drawing them. So a common thing is that you will have flat tops of the fingers and then round bottoms of the fingers. You can add a bit of an arch here, but that will really accentuate the knuckles a lot. So if you want more of a cartoony, simple look, I would avoid that and keep them more straight. And for nails, either A, you can leave a little bit of skin before the end, like something like that, or you can have it just reach all the way to the end. That's up to you. I find myself doing both here and there. But now when the finger is more crunched over like this, the pads of the fingers will be a little more bulgy and pudgy as it'll all be compressed. It'll be something more like this versus having more of a straight finger. They'll be a little more, a little more elongated like that. And you can add in some simple lines to indicate knuckles and bends. That's more of a style choice, but that's up to you. Quite simple. So now we're going to move on to the little more detail with the veins and the tendons. Now again, it's up to you with how detailed you want to get, but I'm just going to cover all the bases here. So here we have a sort of relaxed-ish hand. If you sort of flex the back of your hand, you can sort of see the tendons and where they all lead. So you can add in the knuckles, and then the tendons will all converge a little bit to the pinky side. Something quick and easy like that. So now if you're going to shade it, make this all the shadow because all of the light source coming from this way so then these will have cast a bit of a shadow on the knuckles and then this will lead into how to draw veins so a super quick and easy way to draw veins is you just take your eraser after you do some shading and you just do a quick little cut through and say we'll have one right here another one going over this way you just cut out some spaces here and then you add in just a little bit of negative space drawing and maybe you can have a little bit over here but it's just super easy can be very effective. Now it's up to you again how many veins or if you want to do veins at all. But this can be applied throughout the whole arm and the body. It doesn't just have to be on the hands. Now this isn't the only way to draw veins but it's a very quick and easy one to really add some like intenseness to the shot. One more thing I, I want to touch on here when you're holding an object. I will commonly see people just draw a simple fist like this and then they'll just stick the hilt of the sword or whatever it is just right through it. I feel like it doesn't really have the same effect especially when you're having like a big weapon in your hand. Now when I draw someone holding something I will often draw the object first and then I will draw the fingers my hand around it so that it's just easier for me to visualize the space that it's taking up in my hand. So we'll just draw a quick hand going on around here. Again add that curves in the knuckle height and you can add again add some lines to have some knuckles here. Very common in a lot of comic book art. Quick and easy something like that took no time at all and you can quickly see a big difference between something like this to something like this. And that's my last little tip for you guys. So now if there is any more topics you guys want me to cover, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped. And that's all I have for you guys. So until next time, deuces.